Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Avengers Age of Ultron, starring Robert Downey Jr., Chris Hemsworth, Mark Ruffalo, Chris Evans, Scarlett Johansson, Jeremy Renner, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Elizabeth Olsen, P Paul Bettany, and James Spader, and directed by Joss Whedon, who I get the impression that he's going to be tired after this movie, and that's why he's not back for Infinity War. So let's get into this thing, and see how tired everybody is after this movie. We open the movie in Eastern Europe with the Avengers taking down Hydra and grabbing Loki's scepter and we get introduced to Quicksilver, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson with a horrible accent, and Scarlet Witch, played by Elizabeth Olsen with a much worse accent, and Quicksilver and Hawkeye, returned by Jeremy Renner, have this joke they tell each other, you did not see that coming? They say it again and again to a point that'll wear out really fast. Another thing they will come up again and again is the fact that Captain America returned by Chris Evans doesn't like bad language. And the last thing they'll bring back again and again is Black Widow returned by Scarlett Johansson doing a lullaby to the Hulk turning back to Bruce Banner returned by Mark Ruffalo. Is this movie being repetitive or is this Marvel's for dummies? Because it really annoyed me throughout. Tony Stark, returned by Robert Downey Jr., is the only toxic one, and he begins to lose my respect for him after the three Iron Mans and the first Avengers. Like, now I don't like him, I, and he really got on my nerves, particularly since he, as well as Dr. Banner, are the ones that created an artificial intelligence thing called Ultron, played by James Spader, and Spielberg made a movie called AI Artificial Intelligence, which I will be reviewing next week. And when this movie came out, there was a movie out in theaters called Ex Machina, which was about artificial intelligence. And James Spader as Ultron, wow. He was just horrible. Like, I don't like this guy. And it reminded me a hell of a lot of Pinocchio with There Are No Strings On Me. And I really didn't like Ultron as a villain at all. I'm just going to say it again, guys. I did not like Ultron. As Ultron awakens, Jarvis returned by Paul Bettany. And I'll have questions about Vision later in the show, but I felt bad for Jarvis when he dies at this point. Another few characters that I don't feel matter are Rhodey re returned by Don Cheadle, Sam Wilson returned by Anthony Mackie, and Maria Hill re returned by Kobe Smulders return to this movie and they don't matter as much but what does matter is we is we get a Stan Lee cameo as a World War II veteran and it's really funny to me I really like when Tony and Thor returned by Chris Hemsworth compete whose girlfriend is better playing Jane or unlikable Pepper and Thor says Jane's better and neither one does it for me I don't think I like either one of the leading ladies from those two movies Ultron has a plan, which is to get Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch to tear the Avengers apart, but first they have to get them in the same crime scene as they go to a Black Panther villain named Ulysses Claw, played by Andy Serkis, who gets his arm cut off by Ultron, and because this is a PG-13 rated movie, they can't show too much blood, but again, Ultron is a pretty lame villain. But to show Andy Serkis in this movie, I thought was... There's way too many characters in this movie at this point that I'm just going to lose my mind. I do like when Scarlet Witch tries to mind control Hawkeye and he says, I've done the whole mind trick thing. I'm not a fan. But she gets the others mind controlled with Thor. It's Heimdall, who's going to strangle Thor, returned by Idris Elba. And Captain America, Peggy Carter is back and ready to dance with Steve, and she's returned by Haley Atwell, and Black Widow has Julie Delpy as the instructor of the assassination. And the Hulk, well, let's get to this scene, where Tony goes fighting the Hulk, and this big suit called the Hulkbuster, which is a badass suit, by the way, and I love the way the Hulkbuster punches the Hulk, and Tony says, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, and the way he punches the Hulk, and he spits his tooth, he spits a tooth out, and Tony says, I'm sorry. And the Hulk keeps fighting, which leads to Tony putting the Hulk 
through a construction building and the Hulk is back to normal and Tony knocks him out and that I thought was a great fight and I and I've seen that Hulk Buster thing uh, um being cosplayed at Comic Con before it's pretty cool and and yeah I I really like that suit Hawkeye takes the whole team to the safe house and we find out he's married to Laura played by Linda Cardellini returning from Daddy's home and I like the whole sequence for a little quiet time reasons. While the quiet time is going on, Nick Fury returned by Samuel Jackson shows up and I'm happy to see him again. And I'm such a fan of this actor. Does Thor really need to take a bath in order to see visions of the future but the Infinity Stones and the Gauntlet? Because that was very questionable and was way too silly of a scene. Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch sees Ultron's plans of destroying the world, and they switch sides from Ultron's goons to the Avengers team. And while they fight with Ultron, and Scarlet Witch stops the train, and Quicksilver saves the people that almost gets killed by the train itself, was a pretty good action sequence. Tony and Banner create Jarvis and makes him become Vision. Da da da. And Cap tries to stop Tony from what doing that again. And again, I just like Iron Man in this movie. While Cap, Scarlet Witch, and Quicksilver fight against Tony, Banner, and Hawkeye, and Thor comes in and we get Vision. And why do we get Vision? And why is he called Vision? I mean, I get his power, but this guy as a character makes no sense to me. But I do like how he's the only one who can carry Thor's hammer. That was laugh out loud funny. The Avengers assemble again while Ultron pulls half of Eastern Europe and it begins with the ground flying and they all get something f and they all get something to do and they go around to the drill or the core thing and fight Ultron and his robots and Thor, Iron Man and Vision fry Ultron while Nick Fury shows up with the plane to save civilians and everyone gets on except Quicksilver who dies because he saves Hawkeye and civilian and a civilian and Ultron's heart gets pulled out by Scarlet Witch, and that, and all of that was action-packed, although I did feel bad for Quicksilver, because he's not going to be in the next bunch of movies. Meanwhile, the Hulk goes on a plane and takes off without the, t the rest of the team, and gets lost, which kind of a weird moment, and Vision destroys Ultron for good, which is, again, a little bit strange. Uh, well, not Doctor Strange level, but just strange. While Tony and Thor take off, Captain America leads a new B team of Avengers like the Falcon, Vision, War Machine, and Scarlet Witch with Black Widow and Cap says Avengers and it cuts before he says Assemble, which is now getting a little obnoxious after the Captain America the Winter Soldier. And the mid credits scene is Thanos putting on the gauntlet and says, Fine, I'll do it myself. Which is a good intense scene. I, I really like to hear Josh Brolin's voice back as Thanos. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 7.9 out of 10. There were some things I liked in this movie, like the returning characters and some of the action, but what I didn't like was Ultron, Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch's axe, and Scarlet Witch's accents, let me rephrase that. And Iron Man is big is a big ass for creating this movie's plot, but overall it was somewhat fun. So I'd like to thank you guys for joining me, and next time I will be back with Ant-Man. And until next time, Avengers Assemble! <laughs>